Uh, well, thank you so much, Sylvia, for uh, agreeing to to be interviewed. I, you know, we had we had talked um, a couple days ago um, just kind of about uh, your your expert brand and all the things that you're doing uh, to get known as an expert. And I, I thought it was your story was kind of cool, and I wanted to share that with the readers of my blog. So. Um, Again, thank you very much for, for coming. And did you want to just maybe tell us just a little bit about who you are and, and what you do? Sure. So um, I'm Sylvia Johnson, as you said, founder of Outside the Cubicle and the creator of the Thriving Business Model. And what I do is I work with women who are frustrated, overwhelmed, or confused about how to grow their businesses, um, especially lifestyle businesses. That's where my sweet spot is. Cool. And, um, you know, it, it's a passion of mine that I have to help, you know, women and, and some men, I'll tell you, I have men in my clientele, um, really set up businesses that they not only love, but also produce income for them. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Now, now you haven't always had your own business making money with, with your knowledge and your skills. You used to work in uh, the corporate world, right? Yes, yes, I was um, like everybody else who was told growing up that you what you had to do was get a degree, you know, and get a job, yeah. do that whole thing. So I did that for for ten years. Okay. So what made you uh, what made you decide to go out on your own and and make money with with your knowledge instead of just trading the, the hours for dollars? Yeah. So. Um, I'll give you the synopsis, but I'll break out the journey because I think most of us who who were sort of escaping that comfort and mm -hmm. security of the employee world all probably have a, a really long of diff story of different milestones, right? That yeah, get us definitely. to where we are. Yeah. Um, but for me, where it really started was when I joined high tech. Um, pretty soon after college, I was in organizational development in high tech. Um, I found out that there was this whole group of people who came in and out, kept their own hours, decided what projects they wanted to work on, didn't really answer to anybody per se. And I was like, who are you and what are you doing and why do you have so much freedom? And <laughs> how come nobody told me about you before? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was actually my first um, taste of like there's this whole other world of entrepreneurship beyond okay. a brick and mortar store that you have to be there 24-7, yeah. uh, 365 days a year in order to make it work, right? Sure, sure. So these people that and, you were, I'm, I'm sorry, were the people that you, expo no, that you were exposed to, were those consultants that you were meeting through your job? or? How? Yeah, okay. yeah, they were primarily consultants because I was in the HR space. Okay. So we brought in a lot of executive coaches and trainers oh. and things of that nature, right? Gotcha. People, experts. Right? Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, so that started my journey of like, holy smokes, there's a whole other world out here. And how do I be, how do I get there? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because uh, somehow that represented freedom and flexibility and lifestyle um, where I, I could, you know, I knew I was someone that loved to work hard, but uh -huh. also to play hard. Yeah. So that's what started me off. And, um, you know, we all get a little bit lost along the way. Uh -huh. So fast forward <laughs> 10 years, <laughs> um, having, you know, still having noodling this stuff, taking classes, reading books, um, Doing all the dreaming, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you gotta got to visualize it. Right. It absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, you know, I got to the point where there was the last straw that put me over the edge and set me um, outside the cubicle. Okay. Which was when I had to lay off a group of engineers. Okay. So, you know, in 2008, we all know the, the economy, what, what mm -hmm. happened and what was going on. And I well, was and that, in, in. That was uh, one of your primary duties, right? Was was laying people off. Yeah. Well, prior to <laughs> prior to the downturn, it was acquisitions, restructures, divestitures, you know, all that kind of sure. typical organizational development kind of work. Um, but at that time, 
you know, the primary duty was lay off, right? Yeah. And uh, if anybody saw that movie, um, the Up in the Air, the George Clooney movie, uh -huh. that's very much how it was for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, there's this group of engineers who, quite frankly, we had acquired um, about a year and a half, maybe two years max, okay. prior to to this. Okay. They were the up and comers. We, you know, we were just about. Well, they did um, move them from their original Skunk Works, really stinky place. <laughs> <laughs> Skunk works. I've never heard that term before. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> but we had just moved them into this brand new, awesome, high-rise, 23rd story uh, place up in San Francisco. Okay. And, you know, I, I just, I felt for them because they these were the people that actually wanted to be, an, you know, employees. This sure. is what... They were they were passionate about what they wanted to do. Yeah, and I, you know, and I thought I don't really want to be here. This is not what I want to be doing. Right. Um, and if I can leave and save one person's job, then I'm going to do that. And so that was really the impetus for me to to leave. Sure. During the biggest downturn. Yeah. <laughs> like the yeah. The US. So. <laughs> yeah. Did, was that a factor in your decision? I mean, did, did that did that kind of make it a little harder to make that to make that leap? Yeah, I um, I think it's just in my personality of go with go with your gut, take the leap, and ask questions later. Sure, sure. Um, which I don't always recommend, uh -huh. obviously. <laughs> Um, for me, it did work. It's something okay. that's just sort of been encoded in my DNA. Uh -huh. um, what was more of a concern is that at the time, I was actually planning my wedding. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was leaving work and then planning a wedding and, you know, all that. And actually, that ended up being a um, was sort of a blessing in disguise because okay. I had this unlimited time to, to do that. Okay. Take time off. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, cool, cool. Well, so um, what would you say was the hardest part of making that transition? Yeah, I would have to say for, for me, it's the, the crazies, I, as I call them, <laughs> that ensue, where in a, in a job, I think there are times where if we, we get a raise or a promotion or uh -huh. change positions or something like that, where we have these mechanisms, right, and these structures in place that say, you know what, that's your job title and that's what you have to do. You have to perform. Okay. And you may have moments of feeling of insecurity or not sure that you're good enough or you question your ability to just do something, but you know what, there's somebody over your head going, you got to get it done. Right, <laughs> yeah. And when you're off on your own, uh -huh. when you fall into that insecurity and self-doubt and um all like i said i you know i just call them the crazy the uh -huh. um there's nobody sort of over your head going well tough you have to do that right right it it all has to come from the inside yeah right um ultimately yeah sure you can get coaches and you know you can find ways masterminds other ways that um other people can hold you accountable, uh -huh. but in the end, it's all up to you. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're responsible soups to nuts, and um, that's that was, I think, the hardest transition, um, and not having a community mm -hmm. around me who had been a part of that transition, because I yep. somehow connected with a lot of people who were just serial entrepreneurs, they're folks that, that that's just who they were from the beginning. Okay. Um, that they get yeah. the transition. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> it kind of made me laugh because they were trying to teach me how to set goals and do stuff. I'm like, no, no, I know how to set goals. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I taught the course yeah. on how to set goals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but um, like, how do I get over myself? Right. And, and right. my stuff. Sure. 
Sure. Well, so what? Yeah. What have you found any techniques that are useful for useful for dealing with the crazies? And just FYI, I've got my pen right here, <laughs> and I'm writing <laughs> <laughs> because I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, there's definitely a number of, of techniques. One that I absolutely love to use and I recommend for everybody is to, to journal. Okay. Because anytime you get that, the crazies, there's some part of you, typically it's like your three to seven year old self, uh -huh. um, who's just freaking out. They're, it's just a part of you that's overwhelmed and all it's trying to do is keep you safe and secure and, you know, there's weak. We can have a whole other discussion about that, uh -huh. but when you, when it comes down to it, that part of you is just trying to protect you in some way. So if you give it voice, if you know, and I find journaling really works for that. Um, and believe me, I was the anti-journaling kind of person. I resisted it for the longest time. But if you just sit down and let that part of you be like, "Hey, what are you, what are you telling me?" Mm -hmm. Write it all out. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, it dissipates. Okay. Because it's the whole notion of whatever you resist yeah. persists. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Yeah. So if you allow space for that to mm -hmm. happen and just to let it out, mm -hmm. it just it, it dissipates like that and you can move hmm. on. Okay. Um, and the funny thing is I think is we coming from an employee mindset, mm -hmm. right? Just being conditioned in that place. We're so used to being buttoned up and like, no, I'm fine and nothing phases me. Right. And you have that facade that we think that we think that if we like let that part of us out, that somehow it's just going to take over and yeah. we're going to become useless. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because but we're... it's so true. Right. Right. Well, any any other any other tips for dealing with the crazies that you'd uh, like to share? Yeah, I would say the other component is, and this is one of the biggest pieces, is have a clear picture um, of why it is you're doing what you're doing. Okay. There's nothing that beats your own clarity for why you're doing something. Okay. And the thing with that that I want to just share is oftentimes we, you know, we hear that it needs to be this future goal vision thing, mm -hmm. which is absolutely important. Mm -hmm. And many of us have different um, motivational strategies. Okay. So motivation comes from either a push away mm -hmm. from something mm -hmm. or a pull towards something. Okay. And most of us have a combination of both. Okay. So it's sort of like that band uh -huh. you know it's I you're pulling one side of the rubber band or the other yeah. but regardless there's tension and if uh -huh. when you let it go it it propels yeah so for you you need to figure out which way are you motivated I taught um, a workshop actually this weekend where one of the ladies said oh my gosh the thing that motivates me is a bank statement that doesn't have, like, I see an image in my mind of a bank statement that doesn't have enough money. Mm. Like, that's what gets her going. So she's moving away from that. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So somebody Whereas else I might have... move towards a bank statement that has a lot of money on it. Exactly. I see. Okay. Exactly. So it's when you figure out what's your formula, uh -huh. are you away from towards or a combination of both okay then you can set up your goals and your visioning and all that stuff so it works for you so one of the easiest ways for you to figure out how you're motivated is to think back to a time when you accomplished a goal and it seemed like it was really easy for you to accomplish okay and you can write down like how is it that you did that what is it that motivated you mm -hmm. And if you answer that question, you're going to get some clues. You're, it's going to say, you know, I was, it was when I lost 10 pounds and it was really easy because I just felt so unhealthy mm -hmm. and I, how I looked and I wanted to look good for this wedding that was coming up or whatever it is. Right? Mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. 
So then when you read back through that, you're like, oh, that person, or if it's you, let's say, oh, that person is really away from motivated. Okay. Right? Yep. And maybe in the end it says, um, and I really want to look good. Okay, so most of it is away from, right? Because you were overweight, you were unhealthy, didn't mm -hmm. like the way you look. Mm -hmm. Those are all away from. Last sentence is, and I wanted to look good. That's mm -hmm. a towards. I gotcha. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So when you set up that goal or vision, then it's all about heavy um, away from with just a little bit about what's possible or that vision for the future. Gotcha. Okay. Well, cool. That's really cool. Do you, do you have any online resources you, we could point the viewers towards that would give them some, you know, any anything around that uh, towards in a way or anything like that? Yeah, actually, if they go to the blog, my blog, outsidethecubicle.com okay. forward slash blog, okay. and they click on the category mindset. There's quite a few other articles that I've written, and one of them is this whole notion with a few more resources that they can that they can find. Well, cool, cool. I'll I'll put that in the notes below the video. Yeah. Excellent. Well, that, that I thought that that was really cool. So I, I love the towards and away from thing. That's that's a, a really. I'm gonna kind of put that around some of my thoughts and my goals and kind of where I'm where I'm going right now. That'd be that's that's cool. Um, well, so what's the best part of having your own business? What do you like? What do you like the most about having not just your own business but your own lifestyle business that's based around your expertise? Yeah, my favorite part is the flexibility that I have. Okay. Uh, because I have purposely designed my business so that I could take it anywhere I want mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah. And so I've had the privilege of running my business from Paris, from mm -hmm. Hawaii, from El Salvador, from the Caribbean, uh -huh. uh, all across the states. And in addition to that, because I've created the business in such a way that gives me the flexibility and that I can work with people all over the world, mm -hmm. I have had that privilege as well. So I get people um, that are working with me. I start a group program or one-on-one -on -one programs or just visiting my blog or um, you know Facebook fan page or whatever that are from everywhere okay. around the world. It's a blast to see that you can have an impact for yeah. me. It's like I'm having a massive impact worldwide yeah. from the comfort of my home or wherever I can have my computer, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so um, that's been huge for me. So that cool. freedom that um, you really don't get not in the same way. Um, even here, we we've got really progressive, high tech companies, but uh -huh. it's just not quite the same. Right, as right. Saying, you know, I'm gonna go head out to the beach and maybe write my newsletter from there or yeah, yeah. whatever. Well, so what what yeah. would you say is the one coolest, most awesome thing that you've done to take advantage of your your lifestyle business and the flexibility that it gives you? Ah. <sighs> <laughs> Are you ready for it? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> My absolutely most favorite thing um, is the fact that my business with Soul Mastermind okay. includes a retreat in Hawaii. Oh, wow. So I love that uh -huh. because it gives other people the opportunity to truly live yeah. my lifestyle uh -huh. and get a taste for what's possible and I get to write it off. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> with your tax people. But, <laughs> you know, I've worked it out and we've been sure it's up and the up and up, but okay. I've been able to, you know, write off these amazing trips. Um have an impact, do that thing and be in Hawaii. Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah. Well, that sounds that sounds awesome. That sounds very cool. So, what is what is the most important thing that you've learned? What's the biggest lesson that you've learned throughout your journey? Oh, yeah. Um, the biggest lesson that I've learned is truly, and I, I don't want to sound trite about it, but truly, there is no such thing as failure. Hmm. It really is all about the feedback. 
Um, I think, again, coming from an employee mindset, we are <laughs> we're conditioned mm -hmm. to feel that there is such a thing as failure, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, failure means you don't get that promotion, you didn't do that project well enough, so you didn't get the bonus mm -hmm. or um, whatever that is. And in the world of entrepreneurship, I, I often say that it's the complete opposite okay. of being an employee. And really, it is all about feedback. It's you did something, you tested it, you tried it. Instead of beating yourself up about it, get really curious mm -hmm. and go, well, huh, how come that didn't work for me? Yeah. Especially if you're testing something that... Um, Someone else has said, oh, I've had you know, a ton of success. Sure. Instead of, again, beating yourself up or worrying about why it didn't work and expending all this energy, expend that energy on being curious about, well, how come it didn't work out? Right, sure. You know, or sometimes, like I, my first ever teleseminar that I did, I got... Um, I think I got like 10 people signed up and three people showed up live on the call. And the first time out the gate, and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I suck. <laughs> um, you know, all these people are getting thousands of people on their teleseminars uh -huh. and hundreds show up. And, and uh, after I got past the crazies, the, uh -huh. I mean, the crazies <laughs> got <me> there. <laughs> you know, and I started thinking about, well, gosh, I got 10 people signed up and three people showed up live. How can I do that better, right? Mm -hmm. How can I next time get maybe 20 people or mm -hmm. 30 people um, with 10 people showing up? Like what were the parts that really worked out? And so it, it's a tough lesson to learn. Uh -huh. Believe me, I'm not belittling that and, and I get it. Um, but when you can really embody that, not just say, you know, have it be the surface, but really embody it, get it, embrace it, and love it. Uh -huh. It changes this. It uh -huh. really does. Okay. Well, that's that's cool. I, I love that. It's uh, that that's a that's an important lesson uh, to learn. So, what what's the what did what piece of advice would you give to somebody? who uh, is looking to make a transition like you have from working full-time and having a full-time job to making money with their knowledge? Yeah, I would say the best thing is you don't have to, um, and I'm not knocking it, you don't have to put together a business plan per se, but what you really need to get clear on is what is your vision mm. of the lifestyle that you're wanting to lead? Mm -hmm. For me, the vision, and I teach this to all my clients, is it needs to include how much money you're making mm -hmm. and how much time you're spending in your business along mm. with the other things you want to do. Sure. Because when you have that level of clarity, you'll know how to best design your business. Mm -hmm. And the expert business is the most flexible business that you have out there, which is awesome. Yeah. And when you have that level of clarity you can really start to see what um, tools and resources and design of your business and marketing strategies and operational systems mm -hmm. and sales funnels stuff will come from that. Mm -hmm. You really have to start, though, with what's important to you mm -hmm. because you're the only one. <laughs> this is your life, right? Yeah. This is your opportunity to truly live it the right way from the beginning, um, instead of some of us feel like, well, we have to pay our dues and, you know, uh, get our stripes because that's another employee <laughs> mindset condition. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But when you're really focused on that vision and again, mm -hmm. the time and the money, it'll, it'll make all the difference and it'll help you keep on purpose and mm -hmm. on point about what it is you're wanting to create. Sure. Um, and as sort of like the bonus tip here which I love to do with folks, and it's fun to play and dream this way, is put together a spreadsheet or just a running tally uh -huh. of all the different things you would ultimately want to do, let's say three or five years down the road in your your business and your life, Yeah, and put costs associated to that oh, so that okay. you could be really clear 
about what's that bottom line number yeah. that you need to be in yeah in order to make that lifestyle a true success yeah oh that's awesome that's awesome well one one more question i just thought of as as you were talking there it, what it, i feel very while i ultimately discovered that the corporate world was not for me i feel very mm -hmm. very grateful for the experience that i've gained there um and i I know a lot of people are very successful entrepreneurs right out of the gate without having any experience in corporate or, or, or just working full time. Um, but I personally, I sometimes wonder how I would do it if I didn't have all of the people skills and some of the practical skills and all that kind of stuff. So I, wanted, I was wondering, what, what are your thoughts on kind of the advantages of starting in the corporate world and then moving into doing your own thing? Oh, I think that there are a million and one advantages. Okay. <laughs> really, really. I mean, just so some of the things that you pointed out for sure, the people skills, mm -hmm. the communication skills, mm -hmm. your organizational skills. Um, because really, if you were in, in the corporate world uh, for any length of time, you already know how to goal set. You yeah. know how to roll up your goals to a larger strategic plan. Yeah. Um, Especially if you were really paying attention, and mm -hmm. if you are still on the inside, I highly recommend you pay attention to those process, mm -hmm. that process, because it may feel cumbersome and ah, it's annual review time, but mm -hmm. really take a look at what they're doing because it works, yeah. right? Um, but I think all those things are absolutely advantageous, and for me, it was really interesting, and and one of the big reasons why I was such um, I had such a passion to start this particular business in this way, is that I felt there were so many entrepreneurs out there that were teaching how to build businesses, but had no corporate background, mm. and they were teaching things that were really I thought fundamental and basic. Um, because I already came with those particular skill sets, uh, right? Okay. Sure. I still mm -hmm. had to set smart goals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so some of those things that I just felt like, uh, no, I'm past that stage. Now, right. now I need the the next yeah. phase. Yeah. So, um, definitely, I think it, there's a huge advantage mm -hmm. from, from the employee sort of group. And what I would say is take take this the stuff that's working for you in the corporate world and mm -hmm. and definitely bring it with you yeah. and carry it with you into your business. Um, you know, I often talk about the difference between employee and entrepreneurial mindset and mm -hmm. them being pulled opposites, but there's also a lot of things that complement each other sure. within that. Sure. So yeah, for sure. sure. And cool. also, you know, management experience and stuff yeah. like that especially if yeah. he has that <laughs> yeah just at a practical <laughs> level <laughs> yeah yeah well you know and i think it's interesting how like the it, the advantages and the things that you learn and that you benefit from ha from having worked in the corporate world kind of I, hopefully counter what i think is kind of the biggest downside of being in a corporate role which is the feeling of i call it perceived security that you have you know if you're if you're still working you you that paycheck rolls in every 2 weeks and you know you can you can slack off at work for a while you can go on vacation and um and there's not that necessarily that direct um, I mean, the paycheck will keep rolling in until you get fired, right? <laughs> you know, whereas right. um, I, I think when you're when you've got your own business, you know, you can really hurt yourself faster, faster and easier. So, um, right, you know, and it certainly takes a while to get that that uh, income rolling in as you're starting a as you're starting a business, and that's why I think one of the great things of uh, the flexibility that being in the expert industry offers makes it such a great solution for somebody who wants to make that transition because there's so much that you can do while you're still employed. Not that that's a picnic, but nothing you know, nothing in life that's worth doing is. Um, but I think it's it's still much easier than than if you were doing something brick and mortar or something something else like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I know when I was still on the inside. Um, the year prior, maybe it was even a year and a half prior to that, I, I found a nonprofit to work for and do okay. career coaching. Okay. And so, you know, I started, you know, getting getting the experience and learning what it felt like to to run a business because I yeah. did have to set up a side business for, for that. And sure. I just, 
regardless, it'll, even if you did that and mm-hmm. you realize, gosh, this might not be for me, mm-hmm. at least you know. Yeah. At least you know and you still have the safety, security, and comfort of, yeah. of that job. Yeah. Um, but you're right. That's the other thing just to keep in the back of your mind is that that's just, it's a false sense of security in many ways. Mm-hmm. Um, because especially now the, the way the corporations are going and the way things are changing is it's it's going to be different moving forward. So I think that um, we're looking at, regardless of how you cut it, we're looking at a, an age mm-hmm. of amazing opportunity yeah. for everybody to really just get clearer and get closer to being in alignment to who they are. Yeah. And um, my opinion is, if everybody just sat back and did what they were really passionate about, whether it was staying an employee or starting this career as an expert, mm-hmm. then the world would be fine. There's yeah. plenty out there for everybody. That's for if sure. If we just did what we wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> right? Everybody sort of can do it. that life want. passion. Yeah. I love it. And, and what a great, we're, we're about at time. What a great way to wrap it up um, with everybody can have what they want. There's plenty out there for everyone. And there's, um, people like you to help help everyone do it where where can folks go um sylvia to get more information about you yeah they can go to outside the cubicle.com all right and uh when you go there you get the opportunity to be part of my community the otc community and we hold free weekly coaching calls so if anybody's curious or wants um some pieces of advice here and there they can more than welcome to join that as well that sounds awesome Well, thank you very much for your time, Sylvia. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure talking to you, as always, and uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Take care.